Hey, today I'm going to show you how to watercolor a drawing or a stamped image. I drew this rooster this morning and um, I'll be using this little brush. I like to use a little one because it's easier to get into small spaces. And then um, praying semi moist watercolors and then also Windsor and Newton Cotton watercolors and tubes. I like to use those as well. Um, so just have a look and see how I do it and enjoy. So what I'm doing here is I am moistening the area that I'm going to be painting um, just with water that helps the colors to flow a bit better. Um, and it helps your watercolors blend a little bit better to have the canvas wet or the watercolor paper wet beforehand. So I'm getting a little bit of um, cadmium orange on my brush and I'm going to paint mostly the edges of the rooster that darker color um, and then what we'll do is rinse out the brush and kind of pull that color out from the edges. So it's going to be dark by the line and then it's going to gradually get lighter as it goes towards the middle. And then since it's wet, add a little bit more water. If I want to add more pigment, more paint to the edge, it's going to be able to blend a lot more nicely in. So. Alright, and then I can add other colors, taking some cadmium red. And just adding it to areas that I want to. And again, since that is already wet, it blends pretty nicely. Alright, and I also want this area back here to be orange. So I'm moistening that with water. Um, I can do the legs too. Take some cadmium orange. And then where I want it to be darkest is where I'm going to put the full pigment. Along the edges is my favorite. It's shading kind of nice. Then rinse out my brush and then blend the color in to the rest of the areas. So, full color, rinse the brush, and then pull out that pigment to kind of blend it into the rest of the area. All right, so um, if I want to add a little bit more of a different color, get some more cadmium red, put it in cracks, or wherever the heck I want it, because I can do what I want because I'm painting my own crap. All right, so now I've done the orange parts. Um, next, I think I want the tail to be greenish, brownish blue. You know how roosters have like an iridescent tail, so take some brown. Uh, oop, gotta moisten the area. Now if you're working on areas that are closer to each other or touching and um, this area is still wet and it's touching this tail that I want to be green, you want to be careful to let that part dry a little bit otherwise your colors might run onto the other areas that you don't want them to go. So I'll just start with the top tail. All right, so I'm going to take a little bit of brown towards like the base of the tail, go along the edges. Now I want the base of the tail to be more dark, and then I want it to fade out to kind of a green, so I'm going to do the brown first, rinse out my brush, kind of pull that color out a bit. Yeah, that's dry enough. So I'm going to moisten this area with water. 
the whole kind of tail area. And um, put in my brown where I want it to be. I need water. Oh, and as I, I dip it in the water, and so there's not a ton of water on my brush, I like squeeze it out with my fingertips like that. So that there is enough water on there, but it's not going to be too much that it's going to make a droplet on your page and run. So, okay. Um, now I want to fade in some turquoise color um, from the top. So you can have that kind of iridescent tail. Oops, I went outside the lines. That's okay. Okay. I did that on the tail, tips, and then like everything else, I'm gonna pull that pigment down so it fades into the brown. Moisten that. Add more pigment and pull it down. Now it's going to be turquoise on the tips and then I also kind of want it to have like a green-ish turquoise is just what I said because that's the name of the watercolor color um, but it'll be more green. Um, I actually don't really have a green except for this which is yellow green in the praying moist. Um, I like to mix my own using cadmium yellow and turquoise because I can get more more of like a chartreuse color that's more grassy instead of being so I don't know I just don't like that one. I like to make my own because I can control the amount of blue or yellow in it. Um, yeah. So I'm adding some more green to it. In areas where it's kind of light. I kind of want the base of the tail to be a little darker. So instead of using black, I'm going to use like an indigo because that'll make it a little bit grayer, but it's not going to be too dark and it might add a little bit of blue to it. So it, it'll feel a little bit more iridescent. So blending with more water. A little more brown there. around there. It's pretty much just a process. You see if you like how it looks and add colors certain places and and stuff. Okay. So now I think I'm satisfied with the tail. I don't really know what color I should make. I think I'm going to make the top of the wing kind of like a dark orange red and then it'll fade down into like some more green here. I hope you're enjoying this tutorial because in order to get good sound quality I um, turned off my air conditioning so that kind of sucks but it's worth it if I get good sound and you can hear what I'm saying in the end. So, appreciate it, or else. Okay, I'm adding more orange so it's more of a fading. Fading into some yellow ochre, because I think that'll be a good, better transition into the brown. Okay, I'm going to moisten this with water. So it'll blend nicely. Okay, a brown. darker. Alright, now I'm going to add the blue or turquoise color to the tips of the wings. It's getting pretty dark. Okay, and then blend that color in 
with water using the water that was used was already on there to moisten so now his wingtip is nice and blue all right um last thing is chickens let's see for the feet they're yellow right so i'm gonna use yellow ochre for his little feet and i'm just doing solid color so i didn't have to pre-moisten that um don't forget the toenail and if you go out of the lines unless you're like ocd and that's one of the things that bothers you is going outside the lines it's okay to go outside of the lines art is imperfect all right so the last thing i've got to do is his face um i'm going to use rose matter because it's red um, actually, forget that, I'm going to use cadmium red and then mix in some rose matter because I want it to be more of an orangey red. So, go along the edges and use that red orange. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to blend that with the rose matter, which is a more of a pink red. And then I be extra careful around the eyes because I like to keep them white. That's one part of the thing where I like to stay in the lines. Um, and it's not as dark as I want it to be, so I'm going to use more cadmium red to darken that. Especially around the edges. Because that's how I do. A little bit of water to blend it and that's that um oh always sign your artwork so i'm gonna take a uh, pigma something if i can find it throw my signature down and the year 2012. So, um, that's it. Thank you for watching.